The Kings take a second swing at clinching a playoff spot. That and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We would love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. The Kings are back home for the final four games before the playoffs. Tonight, it is game 79 of the 82-game regular season schedule with the Kings hosting the Calgary Flames. In their last game, you might recall, the Kings did a face plant, uh, a 3-1 loss to a bad Anaheim Ducks team, and that loss prevented the Kings from clinching a playoff spot. But they get a second chance to do it tonight, and that's because the St. Louis Blues Stayed alive last night. Uh, They beat the Chicago Blackhawks 5-2. If the Blues had lost that game, it would have clinched a playoff spot for the Kings, but that did not happen. So the Kings have their destiny, if you want to call it that, in their own hands again tonight. Now, just to give you kind of the situation, the St. Louis Blues uh, pretty much have to win out, and the Kings would have to pretty much lose out for the Kings to not make the playoffs and for St. Louis to get in. So again, it's the magic number for the Kings is two, two more points and they are in. And if the blues lose a game, the Kings are in. So a win tonight and the Kings clinch a playoff spot. If the blues lose their next game, the Kings are in, but hopefully the Kings can take care of their own business tonight. Not have to rely on some other team to lose for them to get into the playoffs. Uh, So they got a second chance to take care of business tonight, this time on home ice, hosting the Calgary Flames, who, like the Ducks, are looking to play the spoiler role as they have already been eliminated from the playoffs. The Flames have nothing to play for but pride, I guess. Uh, Maybe, who knows, uh, making an impression for next season. So this is the final of four matchups between these two Pacific Division foes, the LA Kings and the Calgary Flames. LA won the first matchup back on December 23rd by a score of 5-3. to three. Quentin Byfield had two goals, and P.L. Dubois, Alex LaFerriere, and Trevor Moore scored as well. Cam Talbot was in net. He allowed three goals on 32 shots in the victory, and, and that was uh, in Calgary. Second matchup was February the 27th. Uh, that was also in Calgary. Kings lost that one 4-2. to two. Actually, let me correct myself. The win in the first matchup was in L.A. Second matchup was in Calgary. Kings lost that one 4-2. to two. Uh, Philip Deneau and Kevin Fiala had goals in the loss. Cam Talbot again was in net. He allowed three goals on 36 shots. And then the last meeting was in Calgary, March the 30th. Kings lose again by a score of 4-2. to two. Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe had the goals. David Riddick was in net, and he allowed four goals on 35 shots. So, so far, the home team has won all the three previous matchups. Hopefully that trend will uh, resume or continue tonight with the Kings hosting the Flames. Now, coming into the game tonight, L.A. has a record of 41, 26, and 11. They're in fourth place. Excuse me. They're in third place in the Pacific Division, seventh place in the Western Conference, and 13th place in the NHL with 93 points. Kings are 19, 11, and 7 at home this season, uh, coming off that 3-1 road loss in their last game against the Ducks on Tuesday. The Calgary Flames check in with an overall record of 35, 37, and 5. They're in sixth place in the Pacific Division. 12th place in the Western Conference, and 25th place in the NHL with 75 points. Flames are 16, 18, and 4 on the road this season. They are coming off a 3-2 overtime win over the Sharks in San Jose on Tuesday. The Kings are 15th in the NHL in goals scored per game at 3.09. The Flames are 18th 
at 3.04. Kings are fourth in the NHL in goals allowed per game, 2.58. Calgary 23rd in goals allowed per game at 3.25. So the Kings definitely with the team defensive advantage in the matchup. Uh, Kings are 11th in the league in the power play, 22.4%. Flames are 26th with the man advantage at 17.5%. Kings are second in the NHL only to the Carolina Hurricanes. As far as penalty kill percentage, they kill off the other team's power play 85% of the time. Calgary's 10th on the penalty kill at a very respectable 81%. Individually, the Kings have two players with 70 or more points on the season, one player with 30 goals or more, and two players with 20 goals or more. Adrian Kempe leading the team in points with 71. He's got one more point than Kevin Fiala, who's got 70. Trevor Moore leads the team in goals with 30. Adrian Kempe uh, has 27 goals. Uh, and then you've got uh, Andre Kopitar with 26. Kevin Fiala also. Kempe Fiala both have 27 and Kopitar 26 goals. As for the Calgary Flames, they've got one player with 60 or more points this season. That is Nazem Kadri. He's got 68 points to lead the team. Calgary has one player with 30 or more goals. That's Yegor Sharangovich. He has 30. Uh, Sharangovich also has 57 points. And Blake Coleman with 52 points. So some of the players to watch for the Calgary Flames. As for the two netminders, the Kings are going to go with number one goalie Cam Talbot. He checks in with an overall record of 25-19-6, 2.49 goals against average, and a 9.15 save percentage. In his last start, he allowed three goals on 27 shots. That lost to the Ducks. He's 1-1 one one this season against Calgary. Uh, he has a, he's allowed a total of six goals on 68 shots in those two starts against the Flames. Uh, the Flames are expected to go with their number one netminder, and that would be Jacob Markstrom. Uh, as far as the lineup for the LA Kings in this one, we are expecting to see the same lineup we've seen the last two games since Philip Deneau's return and expecting to see that 12-6 setup with the 12 forwards and the six defensemen. Still no Carl Grunstrom, although he's reportedly close to returning from injury. That means Akil Thomas will get another start, his fifth straight. Uh, Cam Talbot is going to be in net, as I mentioned. Um, and I, I you know I, we've talked about maybe getting Cam Talbot some rest um, but the, but not yet. Uh, the, the team didn't play well. Uh, he didn't play well in the last game against Anaheim. I thought he gave up at least one soft goal, um, not his best effort. So I think until the Kings clinch, uh, which hopefully will be tonight, which hopefully will, will include a good performance from Cam Talbot, then when that's put to bed, then you can worry about giving him a, a, a game or two off in the final three games of the regular season. So again, the lineup, Pretty much exactly the same, not not pretty much exactly the same as we saw uh, against the Anaheim Ducks, and hopefully this group will look to redeem themselves uh, because it's time to wrap this thing up. Let's get the win, punch the playoff ticket, and get ready for the playoffs. Uh, I'd rather the Kings not back their way in by having another team lose. Uh, you know they missed a chance to have you know take care of business themselves. On Tuesday, they got a second chance tonight. Let's do this. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm uh, still a bit pissed off at the game on Tuesday uh, against the Ducks team that I obviously hate. Um, you know, a chance to clinch, uh, a chance to run their winning streak over the Ducks to nine in a row to sweep the season series from Anaheim. Uh, and they go in there and they fall on their face. Uh, that was that was bad. It was unacceptable. And uh, definitely look to see a better performance tonight. Obviously, I know fans react differently than the players do. Sometimes that's a good thing. But I actually hope the Kings players themselves are a bit embarrassed and pissed off at that last performance, knowing what the opportunity was that they let slip through their fingers. Uh, they started well, but after a, a good start, they didn't carry it over the rest of the way for whatever reason. We talked about it with a friend of the show, the LA Kings insider, Zach Dooley, on yesterday's show. We need a full 60 minutes from the Kings tonight. Um, they have been very good on home ice under Jim Hiller, 11-2-1 at Crypto.com Arena since the coaching change. So hopefully with the home fans cheering him on tonight, back on home ice, take care of business, get this thing done, clinch the playoff spot, and then turn your focus to the postseason. But get it done tonight. Uh, don't miss another opportunity to take care of this yourself. Let's get it done tonight. Have the LA Kings been a better team statistically with Victor Arvidsson in the lineup? And how much better is P.L. Dubois since the coaching change? We'll dive into that next year on Lockdown LA Kings, your team 
every day. Eating better is easy with Factors, delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Uh, fuel up fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, and there's no prepping, no cooking uh, as far as uh, you know, having to cook the thing, uh, and there's no cleanup needed as well. You do have to cook it. Uh, Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. Use the code locked on NHL 50 and get 50% off. That is code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off are you watching fox sports and espn on tv all day do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting well make the switch to locked on sports today a free 24 7 sports streaming streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or the free amazon fire tv channel app part of the locked on podcast network your team every day as we get closer to the end of the regular season wanted to look back at a couple of important events for the kings and see how they've affected the team statistically as far as a few key players uh, and i do want you to know that i did math for you people and uh it's not my favorite thing to do uh it was not my best subject in school which i'm sure you're shocked at but i did math for you today uh the biggest move the kings made obviously during the regular season was the firing of head coach todd mcclellan at the all-star break the kings were 23 15 and 10 with McClell mcclellan and they've gone 18 11 and 1 under interim coach jim hiller there were two key players that i wanted to kind of focus on and find out how they've done or how they did before the coaching change and how they have done since and the first one is probably no surprise Pierre-Luc Dubois. Has he been better statistically since the coaching change? He does seem, as far as the eye tests go, he's been a better player, but how about what are the numbers show? Well, 48 games under Tom McClellan, Pierre-Luc Dubois had 10 goals, 10 assists for 20 points. He was a minus 16, averaging 15 minutes and 40 seconds of time on ice per game. He had three power play goals and one game winning goal. Now, since the coaching change, Pierre-Luc Dubois in 30 games, has five goals and 14 assists for 19 points. So in 18 fewer games under Jim Hiller, he has just one less point than he had with Todd McClellan. He has gone from a minus 16 under McClellan to a plus six under Jim Hiller. In 18 less games, he has the same number of power play goals, three, and he has two more game-winning goals than he had under McClellan, all while averaging pretty much the exact same ice time uh, under Hiller, he's averaging 15 minutes and 44 seconds, so four more seconds of ice time uh, on average than he had uh, under Todd McClellan. So is P.L. Dubois a different player under Jim Hiller? Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but is he playing better? I think uh, the stats show, and I think the eye test shows that the answer to that is yes. Is he still playing up to the expectations we had at the beginning of the season? Probably not, but at least we are seeing some improvement. Also want to focus on obviously one of the most important players for the Kings, and that's the goaltender in Cam Talbot. How has he done since the coaching change? Well, in 32 games under Tom McClellan, he had a record of 14, 13, and 5, 2.59 goals against average and a 9-11 save percentage. 19 games under Jim Hiller, his record is 11, 6, and 1. His goals against average uh, has decreased to 2.32, and his save percentage slightly increased at 9.14. So a much better winning percentage. Uh, his goals against the average and save percentage also are better. Um, so has the coaching change benefited Cam Talbot? I'd have to say so. Uh, of course, it seems to have benefited the entire team uh, as the result um, of the coaching change. But I think it's uh, fair to say, looking at the numbers, that it has affected two important players that, um, you know, Cam Talbot has had his ups and downs earlier in the season, started great, and then had, uh, you know, fell into a chasm 
Uh, P.L. Dubois obviously uh, needed to, you know, there's maybe there's an adjustment period if you want to be more fair about it to Todd McClellan coming to a new team with a new system, playing with new players. So maybe that is part of the story as to why he wasn't quite as good under Todd McClellan as he now is under Jim Heller. He knows his players now. He knows the system, knows the role he's playing. But again, I think the stats say, and I'm not trying to, you know, bash Todd McClellan for this. I'm not trying to say it was his fault in any way, but you would have to say, looking statistically, that a couple of key players, B.L. Dubois and Cam Talbot, have been better under Jim Hiller than they were under Todd McClellan. Uh, now, I have talked about this a lot, and others have as well, that the Kings were going to be a better team when Victor Arvidsson returned. You know, and the Kings uh, told us, you know, this was basically our trade deadline pickup. He's going to affect the team positively. Um, but has he? It, it seems like he has the, with the eyeball test. But again, I uh, wanted to check the numbers and see if maybe the stats bore that out as well. So 64 games this season for the Kings without Victor Arvidsson. Uh, the team was averaging 3.20 goals per game. Uh, in 14 games with Victor Arvidsson, they're averaging 3.35 goals per game so an improvement uh 64 games without arbits and the kings were averaging 2.59 goals allowed per game in 14 games with arbitson they're averaging allowing 2.35 goals per game so another improvement 64 games without victor arbits the king's power play percentage was 20.9 percent in 14 games with arbitson the king's power play is up 28.2 percent so a pretty significant improvement with victor arbitson uh, that is not a surprise. We talked about the Kings having a bunch of right-hand shots. You get Arvidsson out there who's a left shot, and uh, that was going to help uh, kind of balance things out a bit, uh, make, uh, you know, a, not just have the Kings kind of relegated to one side of the ice, uh, and that seems to have been the case. Interesting that the one team stat the Kings are not better at is something that doesn't involve Victor Arvidsson at all, and that's the penalty kill. Uh, Victor Arvidsson does not kill penalties, so we can't blame uh, it on him, but 64 games without Arvidsson, the Kings penalty kill was at 88.4%. Uh, with Arvidsson over the 14 games he's played, it's at 78.2%. So not nearly as good, not bad, but not nearly as good as it was uh, for the time when Victor Arvidsson wasn't with the team. All right, how about the, how about the big number? How about the winning percentage? Uh, the Kings without Victor Arvidsson this year had a record of 31, 22, and 11 for 73 points. That was in 64 games. The Kings winning percentage without Victor Arvidsson, 48.4%. 14 games with Victor Arvidsson, the team is 10 and 4 for 20 points. The winning percentage with Victor Arvidsson, 78.2%. Now, it is a smaller sample size, obviously, when you're comparing 64 games to 14 games. Uh, so you can take that for what it's worth. But at the same time, um, just like with P.L. Dubois and Cam Talbot, their numbers are better since Jim Hiller took over. Uh, the Kings as a team, certainly scoring goals per game, even allowing average goals per game, the power play percentage per game, and the winning percentage since Victor Arvidsson has rejoined the team or joined the team. Of course, there were two different stints he had. Came back for four games, got hurt again, and now is back for 10 games. But overall, the team seems to be much better with Victor Arvidsson and the 10-4 and four record. Uh, I guess speaks for itself as well. All right, let's get into the latest Pacific Division standings and the Western Conference playoff picture that is next here on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stats for your business team or the best stars for your business team? Well, if you're building your talent roster, then you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find the top talent fast with Indeed's powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Indeed does the hard hiring work for you. Sponsor a job and we'll match you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description right when you post. With Indeed, you can start hiring fast over 3 million businesses worldwide. Use Indeed to hire great talent. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. And that's why with Indeed, you only pay for the quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? And you need Indeed. The LA Kings face the Calgary Flames 7.30 p.m. Pacific time tonight. 
Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast of your LA Kings with Sirius XM on the SXM app search LA Kings. All right, let's check in on the standings in the Pacific Division and the Western Conference playoff race last night. The Predators lost to the Jets in overtime, so Nashville picked up a point. Um, actually, that was the other day. I apologize. The Nashville Predators already clinching a playoff spot. Uh, t- last night, uh, we did have a big game between Edmonton and Vegas. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, as for Vancouver, they are leading the Pacific Division with 105 points. They did lose to the Coyotes last night, 4-3 in overtime, but they do pick up a point with that overtime loss. Edmonton, meanwhile, picked up a big win over the Vegas Golden Knights, 5-1. They do it without star Connor McDavid. They're at 101 points. That was a big win uh, for not only the Edmonton owners, but for the Los Angeles Kings. We'll explain why in a moment. Uh, LA is checking in with 93 points, so they're one point ahead of Vegas as the Golden Knights did not get any points with that loss. The Oilers, Vegas is at 92 points. They're in fourth place in the Pacific uh, and also the number two wildcard team in the West. Nashville, 95 points. I mentioned clinched the playoff spot. Uh, they are the number one wildcard team. And St. Louis staying alive, but barely. 89 points with their win over the Blackhawks last night, 5-2. to two. So, Kings have four games left in the season. Vancouver has three. Edmonton, five. Um, they've got the Coyotes coming up. And then, uh, that's on Friday. And then they've got a game against the Vancouver Canucks at home. Now, if they beat the Coyotes and they beat the Canucks in their next two games, they would move into a tie with Vancouver in points. Now, the Canucks do have the tiebreaker with more regulation wins, but Edmonton has two games uh, or one game in hand on the Canucks. So they have an extra game to try and get uh, two more points. So if they're if they're if they're one or two points clear of the Vancouver, then the tiebreaker doesn't matter. So again, um, right now it is a four-point lead for Vancouver on Edmonton. Oilers win their next two, including the head-to-head game against Vancouver. They're tied for the Pacific Division lead. Why is that important to the LA Kings? If you've been paying attention, we would like the Vancouver Canucks, at least I would, and I think most of us would. We would like the Vancouver Canucks to not be in first place. We would like the Oilers to be in first place so we don't have to play them in the 2-3 matchup in the Pacific Division in the first round. So if the Oilers can get the two points on Friday and the big two points head-to-head against Vancouver on Saturday. Again, they'd be tied in points with one game in hand for the Oilers. So obviously work to be done for Edmonton, but it's it's there for them uh, if they want to win that Pacific Pacific Division. And hopefully the Kings also keep winning, staying ahead of Vegas because they have to finish in third place to make that matter at all. So still a lot of big games to go. Uh, certainly it starts tonight for the Kings against the Calgary Flames. Get into the playoffs, punch that playoff ticket, and then we can start really kind of focusing and worrying about what the playoff matchups are going to be. As far as games of interest tonight for the LA Kings, really none. Uh, The Canucks, Oilers, Golden Knights, Blues, all not in action tonight. If the playoffs started today, uh, the Kings would be facing the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs. Before we sign off, I did want to uh, give a shout out to a friend of the show. Uh, His name is Calligan Tim. Uh, He was uh, an L.A. native, big Kings fan. uh, And as things happen in life, he ended up moving away to Michigan. Um, He came back to L.A. for a game recently. I had the good fortune of being able to meet him out of Crypto.com Arena. Uh, He is going through um, uh, he's going through cancer. Uh, He's uh, battling uh, he's doing the best he can, um, but uh, unfortunately, things aren't going as well as uh, as we would have liked. Um, so just want to s- tell Tim, thinking of him, uh, wishing you the best. Uh, I know he's watching the games. He's watching this show, uh, and uh, hopefully the Kings can give him something to feel good about tonight getting into the playoffs. But uh, Tim just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, I'm sure Kings fans everywhere wishing you the best and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And that's all you can do. Um, but uh, it was great to meet you and uh, looking forward to continuing to talk to you about the Kings. Uh, and thank you for all the support of, uh, of this show and, uh, and the other things that I've been involved in that I know that you have enjoyed as well. All right. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked on Lake Kings every day coming up on Friday, we are going to recap the Kings Flames game and sincerely hope we get the chance to talk about the Kings clinching a playoff spot, getting that out of the way. Uh, and getting ready for 
The playoffs, of course, on a Friday. We'll also have a Kings fan feedback show. And so far, we haven't had too many emails, to be honest with you. So if you're interested in uh, making a comment on anything we've talked about today or this week, um, there's an opportunity for you to get that in. Uh, the email address is lockedoneddy at gmail.com. I do know that some people like to kind of wait until the day before to do that. So I'm sure we'll get a few emails there. But uh, lockedoneddy at gmail.com is the email address. Uh, and if you want to participate in the feedback show, we would love to have you do that. Also enjoy when you guys post comments on the YouTube channel as well. We got the comment section below there. And I am told by people smarter than me that comments and likes uh, help the algorithm and help the show to get found and helps uh, the show to do better. So thank you for that. Uh, and we'd also love you to stay interactive with us on social media, X, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at locked on LA Kings. And if you want to send a comment through that, uh, that way as well. Uh, you can certainly do that. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We will talk to you on Friday. And as always, go Kings go.